looking back on it, I would recommend, and hindsight's twenty twenty, but I would recommend head and neck cancer patients getting a dietitian and having appointments with her. And in fact, that's something that I have been recently thinking that I need to do is go back, find the dietitian, or get a referral to her from my oncologist and um, just talking to someone about making sure that I'm getting in the nutrients that I need, the calories that I need. So uh, during my time, I think I mentioned I'd had two feeding tubes and those were both right after surgeries or during, and I would also encourage head and neck cancer patients, don't, don't feel bad about getting a peg tube. If you need a peg tube, get one. It's not that bad. I mean, at first I thought, oh, I'll do anything. I don't want a feeding tube. But once you have it and you can get your nutrition in there, you've taken the pressure off of yourself from, um, from eating and they've given me coping mechanisms to hold my head a certain way and swallow or drink more fluid when I eat, which by the way, I don't know how I could drink more, how I could drink more fluid when I eat because I drink a lot, but it's because I have to, to get it down. I season more with herbs. Uh, I do not use as much pepper. I used to use a lot of black and red and white pepper in seasoning. I use a little bit, but um, I'm, I'm cautious about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't use any hot peppers or anything like that because of, he can't tolerate it, and we just don't miss it. It's okay. It's okay. I eat a lot more vegetables. I just cut them up into small pieces. Yeah. I don't have to puree anything. I try not to undercook, you know, the crispy green beans, for instance. I try not to way undercook those so that they are harder to swallow. But um, at the same time, if things are too thin, he doesn't have the ability to swallow really thin soups, for instance. So I, um, one of his favorite soups is a uh, broccoli cheese, mm -hmm. and I make that from scratch with homemade broth. and. And every, I brought it one time for our, one of our dinners for the head and neck group. And now I can't bring anything else. That's all they want me to bring. <laughs> so I think that was a success. And I got that from one of the head and neck books in our library here, cookbooks. Uh, because I sort of, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing cooking wise. And I had to sort of school myself. I can eat solid food if I chew very slowly and take small bites. But I still avoid things like chicken, steak, and go more for things like casseroles, where the chicken is cut up or shredded, or meatloaf, instead of meat that I have to chew up. Those things are easier to swallow. Those are some things that I've done to try to make sure I've gotten the correct nutrition in. That I've gotten the nutrition I need. But now I eat uh, everything and a lot of it. But there are no... Um, normally when someone eats, there's a process called peristalsis, just like in your intestines that move, moves your food from swallowing it to your stomach. And I don't have any of those. Those were all destroyed by radiation and surgery. So I eat, but I have to wait for gravity to take its uh, time and move whatever I've eaten to my stomach. So if I take four or five bites really fast, I get full, but I'm really full just here. I'm not full here. So it's, a, it's like anything. It's a process. It feels like you won't. It feels like things are never going to be the same.
but they will be. They will be the same. Things will come back. Life will get back to normal, but it'll be your new normal. Things that you live with, things that I've discussed.